Hello and good evening students and welcome to Baidu's exam prep IS. Let us take a look at the questions we have in today's daily quiz. The first question is which of the following statements is are true? Sodium ion batteries are less efficient, commonly available alternative to lithium ion batteries. India has higher deposits of sodium than lithium. India imports more than 70% of its lithium ion batteries from China and Hong Kong. We have taken this question because in a recent research at IIT Bombay, it has been found that a new cathode material can produce high performance, cost effective and environment friendly sodium ion batteries. Now these batteries, they are expected to be more sustainable in nature compared to the lithium ion batteries that we are using right now. As of now, there is no mass producer of these batteries in the world. There have been many experimental sodium ion batteries all across the world. However, they are not being commonly used in the electric vehicles for which the lithium ion batteries, they are still the prime choice. Now, India wants to fast track the production of sodium ion batteries, especially because India has an abundance of sodium sources. We have more sodium deposits, more sodium sources compared to our lithium sources. Also, right now we have very high dependency when it comes to import of lithium ion batteries. We import almost 70% of our batteries from China and Hong Kong. So as we move towards electrification of our automobiles, it becomes very important for us to become self-sustaining in terms of the batteries that are being used in these vehicles. When we come back to the question, this is incorrect because these are not commonly available alternatives. They are still in the experimental stage. This is correct and this is correct. So your correct answer is B. The next question is, India experiences pre-monsoon showers before the monsoon season arrives in the month of June. How many of the pre-monsoon showers are correctly matched with the states that they affect? Cherry blossom showers in Meghalaya, Bordoisila in Assam, mango showers in Kerala, coffee showers in Karnataka. We have taken this question because the Indian Meteorological Department it has said that monsoon will arrive in Kerala by June 4. Now, usually monsoon arrives by June 1 and it starts spreading to various other states of India. Before the monsoon season, there are various variety of pre-monsoon showers that occur in various regions of the country. Now, the cherry blossom showers, they do not occur in Meghalaya. Now, Meghalaya, especially Shillong, it is well known for its cherry blossom season in the month of November. However, these cherry blossom showers, they occur in the state of Karnataka. And it is known as cherry blossom due to the presence of a similar tree known as pink trumpet in the state. Then Bordoi Silla, it occurs in the state of Assam, also known as Kal Baisakhi in the state of West Bengal. Mango showers, yes, they occur in the state of Kerala. Apart from that, even Karnataka and parts of Tamil Nadu experience these showers. Then we have the coffee showers and yes, they occur in Karnataka. So the correct answer, it will be C. Next we have, which of the following statements is our true? India conducted its first nuclear test, codenamed Operation Shakti. In 1974, it was an underwater test conducted off the shore of Maharashtra in the Arabian Sea. India is not a signatory to Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. This question is important because our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, he becomes the first Prime Minister since our first nuclear test of 1974 to visit the city of Hiroshima. Now Hiroshima, this city was devastated in 1945 due to the nuclear attacks by USA. In 1974, India conducted its first nuclear test which was known as Operation Smiling Buddha. It occurred in the place called Pokharan. In 1998, India conducted Operation Shakti, which was another nuclear test and it also took place in Pokharan. Now, Pokharan is in Rajasthan. So, this was a land-based test. Both these were land-based tests in the state of Rajasthan. Now, this news becomes special for another reason. India is not a nuclear non-proliferation 
treaty signatory. So if we come back to the question, this is incorrect. In 1974, our first nuclear test was codenamed Operation Smiling Buddha. It was not an underwater test. It occurred in the place called Pokharan. This, however, is correct and your correct answer is C. The next question is, which of the following statements is true regarding endosulfan? It is an insecticide that is associated with medical conditions like neurotoxicity. It is covered under both the Stockholm and Rotterdam conventions. It has been banned in India. We have taken this question because the Supreme Court has transferred this case regarding the endosulfan poisoning, especially in the district of Kasargod in the state of Kerala to the Kerala High Court. Now, endosulfan is an organochloride insecticide which was first introduced in the 1950s. Now, it used to be sprayed on many crops like cotton, cashew, fruits, tea, paddy and tobacco for controlling of pests like beetles, worms and white flies. Now, in the year 2011, there was a global consensus to ban endosulfan because of its harmful impact on the health of humans as well as the environment. In humans, it causes many grave medical conditions like physical deformities and fetuses, neurotoxicity, poisoning and so on. In the environment, it leads to bioaccumulation. So, in 2011, it was inserted in the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants and its use was entirely banned. However, India, we sought for a remission on the ban for 10 years. However, the Supreme Court of India, it temporarily banned the production, storage and sale of endosulfan. So, right now, endosulfan is banned in India. Now, this particular chemical, it was also included in the Rotterdam Convention of 1998. So, out of these statements, this is correct. This is also correct and this is also correct. So, your correct answer is D. Now, we come to a PYQ from the year 2014. The 1929 session of Indian National Congress is of significance in the history of freedom movement because attainment of self-government was declared as the objective of Congress. Attainment of Purna Swaraj was adopted as a goal of Congress. Non-cooperation movement was launched. Decision to participate in the Round Table Conference in London was taken. Now, 1929 Congress session was held in Lahore and the president was Jawahar Lal Nehru. Now, in this session, there was the adoption of resolution of Poorna Swaraj or complete independence. So, the correct answer is option B. Now we come to the fact of the day which is about the National Productivity Council. The National Productivity Council, it was established in the year 1958. Now this is an autonomous organization which is under the Department of Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, DPIIT, of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. It undertakes various research in the area of productivity and it also provides consultancy and training services in many areas including industrial engineering, agri-businesses, economic services, quality management, human resource management, information technology, energy management and so on to various government public and private sector organizations. Now, apart from that, the National Productivity Council, it is also a member of Tokyo-based Asian Productivity Organization of which India was a founding member. So, the objective of NPC is to promote innovation-led productivity in a very sustainable manner in all the spheres of our economy. So, when it talks about sustainability, it talks about development in terms of economy, environment as well as the society. It also aims to propagate the consciousness regarding productivity amongst government, businesses and society. So, what are the various activities it undertakes? Simulation and promotion of productivity consciousness in government, businesses and society. Provide consultancy services to promote productivity. 
undertake research in productivity areas and maintain databases of productivity undertake preparation and implementation of various projects and schemes of both the private and the public sector strengthening of regional local and sector wise productivity organization and promotion of it enabled services and e governance in the country so with that we come to an end to the daily quiz i hope you were able to understand all the questions do not forget to tell us in the comments how many questions were you able to answer correctly so thank you very much and have a very good day ahead